In this video, I'll take a look at the Case IR720 filter. This is a 720 nanometer high pass infrared filter. I'd also like to talk about shooting in the winter, hot spots, and the challenges I encountered with cameras that I don't normally use for infrared. If you find my content on infrared photography valuable, be sure to sign up for my newsletter. The link is in the description. I have something new coming this spring, and my newsletter subscribers will be the first to learn about it. I'm super excited. Case asked me to review their IR720 filter. They sent me this filter and a step-up ring to go with it. They're not paying for this review, and my opinions are my own. The Case IR720 filter is available in 77 and 82 millimeter screw-in filters, in 77 and 82 millimeter magnetic filters, and as clip-in flange filters for some cameras such as the Sony Alpha. I'm using the 82 millimeter screw-in filter. I've shot using this filter on a variety of converted and unconverted cameras. I started by shooting these winter scenes on the Fujifilm GFX 50S, a full spectrum conversion, with the Fujinon GF 45mm f2.8 lens. This lens accepts 62mm filters, so I attached the 82mm filter with a step up ring. I'm frequently asked, what do I shoot in the winter? The color of evergreen trees can create a nice contrast with snow, even with the subtle color of a 720 nanometer filter. These shots can give you some ideas. While the Fujinon GF 45mm lens doesn't typically produce hotspots, I noticed some broad hotspots in the sky with these images. I suspect that this is due to snow reflecting lots of light into the lens. Snow appears to be very unforgiving when it comes to hotspots. I'll compare the case filter with another to see if the filter has an impact on hotspots. First, I'll show you how I address these hotspots when editing. Using the mask tool in Lightroom Classic, create a radial gradient. The two most common settings that I use to correct a hotspot are exposure and temp. Dropping the exposure a very small amount will address the brightness of the hotspot. If the hotspot has a color shift, then use the temp slider to correct that. Usually a setting of 10 or 20 to the yellow does the trick. To test your settings, reduce the size of your image. Then, hide and show the mask by clicking the eye icon. Adjust the feather of the radial gradient to blend with the rest of the image. Tweak your settings until you don't see the hotspot. To compare the quality of the filter and determine if hotspots were impacted by the filter, I shot some comparisons with the Hoya R72 filter. On the left is the Hoya R72. On the right is the Case IR720. Both images have the same profile applied to them, a channel mixer with red and blue swapped. Both are set to the exact same white balance, and the exposure in both has been increased by half a stop. No other edits have been made. Both images show the same hotspot in the center of the sky. Both have similar color tones in the sky and trees. If I zoom into 100%, the hotspot discoloration is more pronounced in the image with the case filter. The Hoya has a slightly bluer sky. Looking closely at the trees, the case filter has slightly more contrast than the Hoya. Here is a second set of images with the exact same settings applied as the first set. We see similar characteristics in this set of images. The Hoya has slightly bluer skies. The case has more contrast and slightly more saturation. If we zoom in on this <clears throat> sculpture, you can see the increased saturation from the case filter. This series of shots was taken on the Fujifilm X-T20, a 590 nanometer conversion with the Fujinon XF 23mm f2 lens. I selected this lens specifically to avoid hotspots, but this critical examination is causing me to cast doubt on some of my favorite lenses. Again, the Hoya R72 is on the left and the Case IR720 is on the right. Both images are using the same invert profile for color swap. Both are using the exact same white balance settings. Both images show a faint hotspot in the center with slight discoloration. When zooming in, the Hoya appears just a tad bluer. In looking at the tree, the contrast and saturation are similar. These shots were taken with the Fujinon XF 14mm f2.8. The Hoya appears to do a better job with the hotspot in the center of the image. Zooming into the sky shows slightly bluer sky on the Hoya. Zooming into the tree shows similar contrast and saturation between both filters. 
In a desperate attempt to compare these filters without hotspots, I've attached a vintage lens, the Nikkor N Auto 24mm f2.8. With this lens, these two filters are very close. I detect just a hint of magenta in the sky for the case, especially in the upper right hand corner. I also wanted to test the filter on an unconverted camera, so I attached it to the Fujifilm X-S10, a camera I use for video and product photography. No matter which lens or filter I attached, this camera produced these weird side hotspots. I've never seen anything like it. The X-S10 is a great visible light camera and may be good for an infrared conversion, but it is not at all good as an unconverted infrared camera. I wanted to give the case filter a fair test on an unconverted camera, so I dug out a couple of old cameras. First, the Canon M3. The M3 produced these unusual flares, probably resulting from too many step-up rings converting an 82mm filter to a 43mm lens. Not good. So I tried a Fujifilm XE1 with the Fujinon XF 23mm f2 lens. As you can see here, the Case IR720 produced a very clean image on this unconverted camera, with nice color in the sky and soft colors in the grass. Even with this harsh morning sun, the colors are clean across the frame. The Case IR720 is a solid infrared filter. It produces the color saturation and contrast you'd expect from a 720 nanometer high pass infrared filter. It produces clean images with unconverted cameras, whereas low quality infrared filters struggle with unconverted cameras. The filter is available in threaded, magnetic, and clip-in flange varieties. I would love a good magnetic solution for managing infrared filters. On the negative side, the threaded and magnetic filters are only available in 77 and 82 millimeter sizes. At least one smaller size, such as 55, 58, or 62 millimeter, would allow you to get closer to the thread size for smaller mirrorless or vintage lenses. In some images, hotspots appear just slightly more pronounced with the case filter. And in some images, the color of the sky was slightly different. Aside from unusual issues with the Fujifilm X-S10 and the Canon M3, I was able to work with all of the images made with the Case IR720 filter and produce great images. I can recommend the Case IR720 infrared filter, but I'd steer away from using it with lenses that produce hotspots. As always, you'll get better results with hotspot-free lenses. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Do you have any topics related to infrared photography that you'd like to see addressed? Leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.